Today, uh, three years since the death of Prince Philip. Uh, he was 99 years of age. He died at Windsor Castle and he was the longest serving royal consort in history. Well, joining us now to talk about his life and legacy is the editor in chief of Majesty magazine and the royal biographer Ingrid Stewart. Um, good morning to you. Lovely to have you on the programme. It still turns me cold um, remembering that moment that uh, I found at Operation Fourth Bridge was coming into play. That was to say that all the plans that the broadcasters and indeed the civil servants and the royal family and all the courtiers had in place was was being enacted because P Prince Philip had died. And it was the first you know, major royal death that we had had in, in an incredibly long time. Do you remember where you were when you heard the news three years ago today? I was actually in the market in Henley on Thames, uh, buying some buying some apples. So not not in a very dramatic place, but I do remember the funeral very very well. I think I think we all do because it was so poignant, and it was I think it was the the Queen followed her government's COVID restrictions, so it was very very pared down, and also just to. To let Aimer know, he was Lord High Admiral Prince Philip. There we she, go. The Thank you. Yeah, very it's a senior. wonderful title, isn't it? Lord yeah. High Admiral. And he could, and he could have gone all the way with his with his naval career, but but he put that to one side, didn't he? Well, he had to when uh, the Queen's father became really ill, and he was he was um, um, on service in Malta, and he realised then that his naval days were going to be over, and that he really had to you know had to do what what he was destined to do which was support his wife the queen as monarch ingrid tell me about i mean we, we talked about his military career there so he was used to giving and taking orders there um did he take orders in the royal household or did he make the orders well what happened was philip started to make the orders because he saw that the household was run in a very inefficient way and he was extremely efficient man and he wanted things to run really smoothly so um he became a little bit unpopular because he started ma making quite sweeping changes within the royal household to make it more more efficient and um it wasn't always popular with with the sort of old established members of of the staff that were there Love story between the pair, though. Um, certainly, the Queen Elizabeth um, II was was madly in love with him, and um, I suppose what they had in common, um, apart from sort of both being aristocratic and, and royal, was a love of the country, a shared love of the country. I think they had all that. What they really had in common was this amazing sense of duty, and Philip always said, "You know, my duty is to support my wife as monarch," and. And that's the position he never wavered from. What, whatever else he did, he was always supporting his wife, the Queen. And I, and I think that really big sense of duty was what held them both together over the years. Apart from the other obvious things like his sense of humour, his loyalty, um, and his, his ability just to get on with life and, yeah. get, and make things happen. He made things happen. Yeah, he, he was, uh, I've been saying this morning, in, in my opinion, he was very much the enforcer. Um, you know, he was the sheriff in town. Uh, he made the, the rules and um, people would come to him for advice and I'm sure he would tell them what to do uh, in, in no small way. How would you see his role in the general family circle? Well, in the family circle, he was... In a way, I suppose he was a bit of a house husband, although he would loathe that expression, because the Queen was, was you know, her, when her father died suddenly in, in 1952, she was propelled into a position that she hadn't expected for, for a, a, you know, at least another 10 years. So Philip had to take over the running of the household, the, the, the running of the family. Um, he made the decisions. She 100% agreed with him. And and then he got on with it. What did you make of his relationship or how he viewed Meghan Markle? Oh, I think Prince Philip was very canny about people. Um, and he didn't always see bad in them. He, he tried to see good in them. But I think he just couldn't get away from the fact of the similarities between uh, Meghan and Harry 
and uh, Edward and Mrs. Simpson, if you like. There are so many similarities there, which is why he used to call her uh, the Duchess of Windsor. I mean, not to her face, obviously. We used to call her Dow, (laughs) D-O-W. What about the relationship that was sometimes fraught, especially in the early years, with our now king? Uh, What do you think Prince Philip, given what you know of him and you've written books about him, would make about um, King Charles's reign so far? And I suppose the challenges that the royal family are now facing, do you think he would agree with this slimmed down monarchy, given, you know, their health and, and apparent frailty at the moment? I think he would totally agree with the slimmed down monarchy. And I think he would be very, very proud of his son. He wasn't always proud of his son. I mean, he was a very tough father, and they didn't get along in the in the early years. Obviously, they did later, but I think he would be really proud of the way that, that Charles has sort of immediately implemented what he said he was going to do. He said he wanted a slim-down monarchy, and that's what he's organised. That's what he's now got. It, it is a little bit... Uh, too slim down at the moment, perhaps, but he's coping. He just doesn't want the burden of too many royals upon the British taxpayer. Well, we'll remember him with fondness today on this April the 9th, the third anniversary of his passing. Ingrid, thank you very much indeed for for sharing your thoughts and your opinions with us today. Thank you.